Back in grade school, when you learned about area, you went square, rectangle, triangle, maybe all the way up to circle. And you went formula, 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 formula. But what happens when you have a figure that you don't have a formula for? That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to start here. We've got a quadrilateral vertices. This doesn't help. We need a picture. Very important geometry problem solving strategy. Draw the picture. Seems obvious, but still very important. All right, we go up as high as five. We go out as far as six. Three, four, five, six. Draw the picture. All right, find the vertices. Zero, zero, over one, up two. There's one, two, and over three, up four, three, four, and then the last one, over six, up five. All the way up here is six, five. And then we play a little connect the dots. And we get a really funky looking quadrilateral. Don't have a formula for this. I mean, maybe it's a trapezoid. Well, the slope here, up 2, over 2. The slope is 1. This slope is not 1. So we're up 5 over 6. Not a trapezoid. No formula. What are we going to do? Well, when I see a weird figure like this, I start thinking about how can I express the weird figure in terms of figures I can handle? Well, what figures can I handle in this? So I could try to chop it up, but I'm going to get little pieces that are all kind of weird. One figure I see that I definitely can handle is I can put this in a big box. I understand rectangles. I understand right triangles. So I got this big box here. It's 6 by 5. Its area is 30. And I can cut pieces out to get this. I mean, this piece right here, its area is 15, 6, 5. 6 times 5 divided by 2, 15 right there. But this piece out here is another weird shape I don't have a formula for. It's got a right angle there, though. Maybe I can cut this into pieces that are easier to deal with. You know, if I drop a line right there, right triangle, I can handle right triangles. The x-coordinate here is 3, this is 6, it tells us this length right here is 3, this is 4, this is 5, so this length right there is 1. So this right triangle right here, 1 times 3 divided by 2, has area 1.5. So I got that piece taken care of. Now I have this weird piece to deal with. Well, I'm going to go ahead and cut this into pieces I can handle as well. There's a rectangle. This is 3, this is 1, this has area 3. And now I've got this weird piece down here. I can cut that up too. I can draw this line, right triangle there, this line, rectangle there, right triangle there. And now we're set. This has length 2, this has length 1. That means this has area 2 times 1 divided by 2 is 1. Got a 2 by 1 rectangle, area is 2. And we have a right triangle here. Legs are 2 and 2, the area is 2 times 2 divided by 2 is 2 as well. So I've got all the outside pieces here. I know the whole rectangle has area 30. So I just add up all these pieces and subtract. So we have 15. 2 and 3 gives us another 5. That's 20. Add 1 and 2 gives us 23. 1.5 brings us up to 24.5. That's all these pieces outside. Subtract the 24.5 from the whole rectangle and we get our answer, which is 5.5. Once again, key strategy there is express this weird region in terms of pieces that you can handle. Now let's try that on the next problem. Yikes. This is a bit scarier because we got all these weird curves and, well, we know how to handle a circle, but that's not a circle. Yikes. Okay. Once again, strategy is express the area we want in terms of pieces we understand. Now this one's a lot more complicated, well maybe more complicated than the last one, so I have to come up with a plan. Now for me the key is to actually write down the plan because I might forget it. What's the plan? Uh, well this weird region is this semicircle minus this little piece in here. So I'm going to write that down because if I can figure that out then I'm, then I'm set. Semicircle minus this weird other curved region. But I don't have a formula for that weird curved region either. Uh, so how do I get this weird curved region? Well, I could start with this quarter circle. I know how to handle a quarter circle and subtract the triangle. So now I've got my semicircle minus 
the quarter circle minus the triangle. And these are pieces I can handle. And again, I've written down the plan nice and clear. So now all I have to do is, is follow directions. It's sometimes hard for me just to ask my wife. So I'm going to go ahead and write this like this. I'm going to distribute the negative there. Now I'm going to check it first. Before I start cranking through all this, make sure I've got it right. And the way I'm going to check that is I'm going to make sure well, that I count everything in here exactly once. Everything in here exactly once. Well, I count it in my semicircle, and I don't count it in either of these. We're okay. Now, I don't want to count anything in this weird region at all. So where do I count, include this region over here? Well, I add it once for the semicircle, and then I subtract it once for the quarter circle. Don't touch it for the triangle, so add it once, subtract it once. We don't count it at all. That's good. And then there's the triangle. We add everything in the triangle here. We subtract it all when we take out the semicircle, so we don't count that at all either. So we've counted everything in here exactly once and nothing else. This is right. Now we need to turn it into a number, which means we have to actually read the question. Let's see, we've got, this is 90. This is 90. And that gives us the triangle right away. The triangle's 90 times 90 divided by 2. 90 times 90 is 8,100. Divided by 2, that gives us 4,050. Now, to deal with the semicircle and the quarter circle. Well, the quarter circle, well, we've got the radius right here, 90 squared. Now we have to divide by 4 because we've got a quarter circle. It's going to be 90 squared, 90 squared divided by 4 times pi. And I'm not going to multiply that out just yet because I'm going to hope for something nice to happen because I really don't feel like doing that much arithmetic. Now we have to take care of the semicircle. So we're going to need the radius of the semicircle. Well, the legs of our isosceles right triangle are each 90. That means the whole diameter is 90 times the square root of 2, which tells us that this right here, our radius, is 45 times the square root of 2. So to get the area of our semicircle here, we're going to square this and then divide by 2 because it's a semicircle and multiply by pi. So we're going to have, when we square this, we're going to get 45 squared times the 2, divided by 2, because it's a semicircle, and then we're going to multiply by pi. And now we just have to uh, slug through all of this to get our answer. Well, our 4050 is going to be 4050, but 45 squared times 2 divided by 2, well, that's just 45 squared times pi. And then here we have 90 squared. Well, that's just the square of 2 times 45. And when you square that, you get 2 squared times 45 squared we still have that divided by 4 times pi, and we have this plus 40, 50. And now we see something really, really convenient. 2 squared divided by 4. Those cancel. So I got 45 squared pi minus 45 squared pi. These cancel each other out really nicely. And our, our laziness really paid off there because we didn't have to multiply anything out there. And we have our answer. Our answer is sitting right there. It's this 40, 50. Now, that's kind of surprising. That answer doesn't have pi in it. And this figure right here doesn't have any straight boundaries. It's all nice and curved. And where did the pi go? Well, this figure actually has a little, little piece in math history. It has a special name. It's called the Loon of Hippocrates. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, because no self-respecting Greek would have a name like Hippocrates. This is the Loon of Hippocrates. And Hippocrates, well, he was working on a problem. Well, you see the Greeks, they love them, some really hard geometry problems. And one of their favorites was called squaring the circle. And it goes like this. You start with a circle. And then you break out your straight edge and your compass, and you try to construct a square. that has exactly the same area as this circle. And not only did the Greeks like hard problems, they actually liked impossible problems. They just didn't know this one was impossible. It would take mathematicians a lot longer to prove that you actually can't do that. You can be happy if you have a mind to. So go ahead and try it yourself. But the problem you really want to work on is the one Hippocrates solved while working on squaring the circle. He discovered this figure right here. Well, maybe he didn't discover it, but what he did discover was that he could square this thing. If he'd started with a quarter circle, then constructed a semicircle whose diameter was the hypotenuse here of this isosceles right triangle, and then took this region in between these circular arcs. That's our loon of Hippocrates. If you start with this region, you can construct with a straight edge and compass 
a square that has exactly the same area as this region. And that's your homework.